Although nobody could own him, everybody would call. Slept in the kirkyard. He loved his master true. So Bobby slept in the kirkyard. No other place would do. The good Lord Mayor made this decree that gave him great renown. A dog as loyal as Bobby, he would have the key to the town. Great fire. singing about. I'm a Sky Terrier, and my name is Bobby, and I have the key to the city of Edinburgh. But wait, that's the story I want to tell you. I was born on Colbray Farm, about 20 miles from Edinburgh, and my best friend was an old shepherd named Jock. He was kind to the sheep he cared for, and kind to me, and I loved him, for he was truly my master. Every market day, Jock and the farmer used to go to Edinburgh and take me with them. And every day at one o'clock in the afternoon when the time gun would go off, Jock and I would go to Mr. Trail's place for a meal. But one day, the farmer and old Jock headed for Edinburgh and left me behind. I couldn't understand it at all. So the first chance I got, I jumped through the window of the farmhouse and set off for Edinburgh to find Jock. My legs are quite short. And the way to Edinburgh is long and stony. It took me the whole morning to get there. And my paws were worn out. And I was hot and tired and very hungry. And when the one o'clock gun sounded, I headed for Mr. Trail's place to try and find Jock. Why, Bobby, what's wrong? You're usually bang on time with the one o'clock gun. And you're all muddy and panting, laddie. Where's old Jock? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jock's not here, Bobby. Go find him. My master wasn't at Mr. Trails, and that seemed very strange to me. I knew Edinburgh well and began looking for him. Up one street and down the other, all over the marketplace and into the alleys and byways. As it got dark, it began to rain. I could hardly see, but I kept looking for Jock. In the middle of the night, I found him. He was sleeping, and I lay down by his side. The next morning, when I woke up, my master was still sleeping, but there were a lot of other people there. One was a policeman in a black uniform with a tall black hat and a very black look on his face. When he saw me, he said, That's the old man's dog, and without a collar, too. It's my duty to take him to the police station. If he has no collar, he has no license. I'd heard enough. Although I hated to leave my master still sleeping, I skedaddled right through the policeman's legs and out into the street. The next thing I knew, they were carrying my master in a solemn procession through the streets to Greyfriars Kirkyard, a very important place with a fancy wrought iron fence around it. Naturally, I went along with Jock, and when they laid him to rest in the ground, I lay down beside him. But soon Mr. James Brown, the caretaker of Greyfriars, discovered me and said, who let a dog in here? Gang away out of here. Gang away home. A kirkyard's no place for a dog. Shoof now, and keep out of me kirkyard. Ya hear me? Mr. Brown didn't throw me out very hard, and before he could get the iron gate closed, I'd sneak back in, and he didn't even see me. As he went into his house, I settled down for the night, right beside old Jock, my master. If a body meet a body coming through the rye, if a body kiss a body, need a body cry. Every lassie has her laddie, none they say have I. Yet all the lads they smile on me when God. 
coming through the rye. If a buddy meet a buddy, come and fray the town. If a buddy greet a buddy, need a buddy frown. Every lassie has her laddie, none they say have I. Yet all the lads they smile on me when coming through the rock. The next morning the children singing woke me up. The sun was shining brightly, and a whole gang of kids were singing and playing together in the alley right outside of the courtyard. All of a sudden, they spotted me. Hey, Lee. Hey, Lee. What is it? There's a wee dog Mr. Trail's looking for. Let's try to catch him, and Mr. Trail say he give us a penny. Hush! There's Mr. Brown coming into the courtyard. He'll no be easy to catch with Mr. Brown about. I'll go to the gate and keep Mr. Brown talking, while you kids slip over the fence and catch the wee dog. All right, Tammy. Come on, kids, hurry! Just then I saw a big brown rat skulking along the wall of the kirkyard. I was after him in an instant, forgetting all about the kids and Mr. Brown. What are you doing there? What's going on here? Hey, so you're back. And how did you get back? And don't be looking so pleased with yourself. You're breaking the law of trespass. And you kids do not belong in here either. Clear out, new. Look, husband. This brave wee dog has killed a great big rat. Aye, I'm no saying he is not a bunny fighter, but he's still breaking the law, and there's only one thing to do with him. Aye, there's only one thing to do with him, and we'll do it new. Give him a good wash. He's all muddy and dirty. A bath was the last thing I wanted, but Mrs. Brown caught me up, and before I knew it, she'd plunged me into a tub, and Mr. Brown was scrubbing me with soap. And when he's dry, Jamie Brown, he'll be needing his breakfast. He looks fair thin. Breakfast new, is it? And a bit of liver and such like, no doubt. And a serving maid to wait on him. Ah, hold your grumbling, man. I'll get him some scraps. Get still, will you? Do you have to splash me with your tail, trespasser? Keep still. No dog's permitted is the rule, and you need not try to beguile me to forget it, because you won't. You're going out. After a bite to eat, Mr. Brown took me out to the gates of the kirkyard and pointed out the sign to me. Naturally, I couldn't read it, but he read it to me. Grey Friars Kirkyard. No dog's permitted. There, in black and white. Rat killing or no, out you stay. Away with you. The kids were waiting for me outside the kirkyard, but so was a long black shadow McLean, the policeman. He made a grab for me, and I went through his legs again and almost upset him. But in getting away from the policeman, I ran right into Ailey's arms and she caught me. Give me that wee dog, girl. But sir, Mr. Trail wants to see him. Oh, so Mr. Trail is running a restaurant for dogs, is he? Why do you want the dog, Mr. McLean? Why? Is he your dog? Are you keeping a dog in the kirkyard, Mr. Brown? He's no my dog. But why would you want to catch him? He wears no collar. And with no collar, perhaps he has no license. And that's against the law. And what does a license cost? Seven shillings. And what happens if he's got no license? The law says he must be put away. Oh, no! Let's take the wee dog to Mr. Trail right away. I'll be seeing Mr. Trail myself. So all the kids, with Ailey holding me firm under her arm, raced through the streets of Edinburgh to Mr. Trail's restaurant. Come in. It is not locked. We brought you a wee dog, Mr. Trail. Aye, we caught him. But where do you find him? He was in Greyfriars' courtyard. He sleeps on his master's grave. Old Jock dead. What a loyal and brave wee thing you are, Bobby. Here. You must be hungry. We'll have a bowl of chuck and soup for you. <gasps> He's getting the wee dog chucking to eat. Real chucking to a wee dog. Haley, lock the street doors. I lock them. I'm not open for customers yet. I was just going to have my own dinner first, and I cannot eat by myself. So we'll have a picnic and all have chuck and soup. What's a picnic? 
Picnics are for outdoors in the summertime. Not always, Tommy. It's like I said, you can have a picnic at any time at all when you have a whole lot to eat and you share it. Come on now, sit yourselves down and mind your manners. Chuck, I've never eaten it. Tommy, say grace. For what we about to see, Lord Lord, make us truly start for Amen. I didn't hear what you said. I was not talking to you. Hey, children, now. Here, Bobby, you sit here. After all, this picnic is in your honor. Tammy, this is hard to believe. It's like the tales you make up in your head. Does he make up tales? Aye, and he can read, too. Can he know? And he makes up tales all the time, like how he saves the queen from drowning. And we all get invited to a great big banquet at her castle at Balmore, and then... Uh, stop it, Ailey. <laughs> Just a foolishness of mine, Mr. Trail. Aye. And about him having grown two new legs to run about on, instead of his crippled ones. Aye, Tommy. We'll have to take you to the infirmary. I have a good many friends there, doctors that eat here. If they cannot give you new legs, you can get a pair of crutches that are the next best thing. And no like these poor sticks you have now. 